How are you brothers and sisters? Hoping that you're doing okay. I'm so much uh, energized today to do our Bible study today and I believe it's going to be a blessing to all of us. Now, today's Bible study I'm going to be answering rather a very confusing question because uh, so many people have always passed through this verse and they have never really understood what it means. Now, in the book of Acts chapter 8, we see that uh, the believers in Samaria had not received the Holy Spirit, but they had been baptized and they were believers. What could have happened? Why had the believers in Samaria not received the Holy Spirit, and yet they were already believers, and as well they had been baptized? What could have happened? What could have been the reason? Now, when you look in the book, um, in the in the book of Acts, chapter eight, verse twelve, the Bible says, "But when they believed, Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, this is them. When they believed, Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. This is talking about uh, these believers in Samaria. So they had." They believed and uh, they were baptized. All right. However, we understand that uh, when we get to the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 16, let me just read this one for you. The Bible says, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, talking about the Holy Spirit. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, here there's something confusing. We find that the Holy Spirit had not come to any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And uh, we understand based on the, the passages uh, like, uh, for example, Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, or whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, if that is the case, then how comes these people from Samaria had not yet gotten the Holy Spirit? And we understand that Christians receive the Holy Spirit exactly at the moment of salvation. Remember, Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom you trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, after you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, you get the Holy Spirit immediately after you, you get saved. So, how was it that the Samaritans, whom Philip evangelized to, did not receive the Holy Spirit? Now, First and foremost, we have to understand, it is good to remember that the book of Acts is a transitional book. It is also an history of how God started the church. It is the record of the transition between the old covenant and the new covenant. And much of what we see in the book of Acts relates to that transition. There is a breakdown. We see the events, how they are transitioning from this into this. So that's one area that you should be also very careful when you're dealing with the book of Acts, all right? And the Samaritans, uh, uh, they had a certain kind of manner uh, of receiving, uh, how, how do I say, Th their kind of way of how they received the Holy Spirit then uh, should be taken for exactly what it is. It's just an accurate account of what happened in their case because sometimes there are some cases that you look at this and you say this was a special case because of maybe a few reasons probably which you're going to look uh, into in just, a, in just a bit. So it should not be co construed as, an, as a normative uh, thing to every case. You know there are some people who can normalize this and they say you will be receiving the Holy Spirit. You must receive the Holy Spirit on a specific day, just like the Samaritans. No, it is something that should be checked on as a case which was special in one way, and you're going to understand why. And uh, the believing Samaritans had been baptized in water, all right? But for God's own reasons, they had not yet uh, been baptized 
uh, in the spirit, you understand that uh, water baptism does not give salvation. Right, that, that's true. It is something from the heart. It is, uh, the baptism is by the Holy Spirit and water baptism is just an outward show of something which is already inside. So, but it was a big deal in the early church, definitely. It was a big deal because even later as the days transitions transitioned, we see the Apostle Paul saying, I was not sent to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So you see, there was a transition of something here, all right? So that is something we have to get. And secondly, we should note that the Spirit did not come upon the Samaritans uh, at that time, but it is still the Holy Spirit, sorry, the Holy Spirit still came to the Samaritans even later on. Because when we look at um, the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 14, uh, down to 16 or somewhere there, it says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, whom, uh, who, uh, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And that is now when we see verse 16, why Peter and John had to pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit Verse 16 tells us, for as yet uh, he, he was fallen upon none of them. Before, prior, when, when uh, Philip had prayed and uh, 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 taught them the gospel, they, they had believed, but the Holy Spirit had come on none of them. So you see here there's something to ponder. So now, the Holy Spirit came to the, the people of Samaria only when John and Peter came. And there are some good reasons why God waited until Peter and John were present before he sent uh, the Holy Spirit upon the Samaritans. Now, let's look at these key reasons why it happened like this. Number one, I've, I've penned them down. That's why you can see me reading. Yeah? Number one, Jesus had given Peter the keys to the kingdom. Do you remember that in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 where the Bible says, uh, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So there is this issue of the keys of the kingdom which were given to, the, to Peter at that uh, particular uh, uh, time to deal with the people of God in that specific time. You see, God uh, appoints different people for different reasons. All right, at specific times, like the way God uh, gave the gospel, uh, uh, the gospel of grace to the apostle Paul to the Gentiles, and the Bible says that uh, as as it was to the uns, uh, to the uncircumcision, the gospel was being preached to the uncircumcision or to the Gentiles, uh, being uh, Paul preaching, and also the same thing was mighty with Peter to the circumcision. To the Jews and uh, and the likes, all right. So anyway, let me get out from that point. So we we see concerning these keys to the kingdom. You see, in the first phase of the early church, Peter had a lot of responsibility, and uh, he was given this responsibility by God so that he can be able to stand and uh, do a lot during the early church planting. All right. Now, when we when 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 you look at this. Peter was present, for example, uh, Peter was present and he was a main spokesman at Pentecost. Do you remember in the book of Acts chapter 2? It is Peter who was there. And uh, that was the time when the Spirit was given to the Jews. The Holy Spirit was given to the Jews. And Peter also was present in Samaria in the book of Acts chapter 8 when the Spirit of God was given to the Samaritans like we've just read. And also Peter was present in a Cornelius house in the book of Acts chapter 10 when the Spirit of God was also given to the Gentiles. Remember, even before the Apostle Paul, it is Peter, the first person who preached to the Gentiles and, uh, and, and they were able to, to get the Holy Spirit. It was, it was Peter who was given that mission, all right? So Jesus used Peter to open the door to each of these different kind of groups. And that may be one reason why uh, the Samaritans had to wait until Peter 
was there, was present, so that this can happen, the Holy Spirit to come. Now, let me show you so uh, another point, point number two. Another major reason why it, uh, why the Samaritans did not receive the Holy Spirit until Peter came through, all right? Remember, the church was to be built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, like the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 20. It says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. You see, the church had to be built uh, on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. So there is no way, other way, that uh, some the church could have been founded not on these foundations. All right. And remember, Philip the evangelist had been a deacon in the in the church in Jerusalem, and uh, he was not one. He was not one of the twelve apostles. He, he was basically a leader in in the church in Jerusalem, and uh, we and uh, the Bible said that the church has to be founded on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. So it's not the deacons, you understand? So for a whole community like uh, Samaria uh, to, 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 to be able to get, get this, then there had to be an apostle there or a prophet. But of course we understand the law and the prophet was until John. Now it is a different era, the era of grace. So God had already set up everything. Uh, waiting and how he's going to establish his church you understand the point so peter and john being apostles they needed to be in samaria for the official start of the samaritan church just as they had been in jerusalem for the start of the jewish church so that might be one of the reasons why the people in samaria had to wait until the apostles came to receive the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing the point here? Now let's go to point number three. Now point number three is that the presence of Peter and John kept the early church unified. The early church unified. Remember there was a there was a very a very big animosity between the Jews and the Samaritans. When you look at um, the Bible in the book of John chapter four verse nine, the Bible says. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, talking to Jesus, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. You see, there was a lot of animosity between the Samaritans and the Jews and all that. So they had to be a way of trying to unify them first. And if, if the church in Samaria had begun on its own, with no connection to the Jewish church, then the church in Jerusalem will never have accepted it because there was a big animosity between the two. And the Samaritans were also uh, known historically, historically as corruptors of Judaism. Remember uh, in the book of John chapter 4 verse 20, the Bible says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. These are the Samaritans speaking. They are saying, Our fathers worshipped in these mountains. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. You see that kind of talk by the Samaritans? They, they, they were always trying to corrupt Judaism and trying to put in their own rules because they, they never agreed one to another. So it is very, very likely that God made sure that Peter and John, who are the apostles, uh, and the Jews from Jerusalem were present to witness this the, the gift of the Spirit given to the Samaritans, all right? And the God's message, uh, God's message, that is the church in Samaria, was literally to be given through these apostles. This message was to be given and also try to unify them because the church of God is uni united, is not divided. So if there was anything which was to make all these things seem as if there is a push back and forth, then it could have been a big issue synchronizing the church of Samaria uh, with the Jews and also to the other Gentiles. So these apostles were like a unifying factor between all tribes and all uh, kinds of different 
uh, uh, communities, you understand? So apostles had to be there. They had to be like the foundation. All right? Good. Now, okay, something else that you have to understand is that the Samaritans were part of the same church that had been started in Jerusalem. And they were filled with the same spirit. You know, the Bible tells us that, that uh, in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 28, that there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is no bond or free. There is neither male or female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So to end all this confusion, Peter and John had to be there. And they are eyewitnesses, remember? They are people who had a clear testimony. They had a very clear testimony of that they saw Jesus before he went to the cross, at the cross, and after the cross. So this is pure witnessing. They had, there had to be someone to witness. And uh, that's why I think it is very important that the apostles had to be there before the Holy Spirit comes in, before the full dose of salvation, the full thing, the full salvation, somebody to say, yes, I, I have it all, 100%, had to be achieved. So the witnesses also had to be there. And uh, what happened in Samaria was not just a separate religious uh, movement or a separate religious group that they received it this way, but uh, in this way, God prevented the early church from immediately uh, dividing into some different sects like uh, these ones are from Peter these ones are from Philip these ones are from Apollos these ones are from who no it had to be like it's you are not following Peter or you're not following uh, Philip or Apollos or whoever it is but you're following the word of God which is has been given through the foundation, uh, has been given by God himself, Jesus Christ, but laid on the foundation of the apostles. Are, are you seeing the point? Because there have to be a witness to explain that, yes, we saw Jesus rising up again. We saw this and this and this. But remember, it is the apostles who saw it all and they walked with Jesus all that time. Even as others came afterwards, they were second round witnesses, I may say that. So the apostles were number one witnesses of this. So they had to be there when a church is being planted, all right? So the Lord took pains to uh, to ensure the unity of the early church. That's what I may say here in this uh, con con context. Eh? And Jesus had commanded the gospel to be preached in Samaria. Remember, in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see, so God had already commanded that the Samarians, Samaritans have to hear the gospel. And uh, Philip the evangelist obeyed that command and uh, God blessed, all right? That, that, that's absolute. And uh, whatever animosity which existed between the Jews and the Samaritans was overcome by the unity of the Spirit. That pullback, back and forth between the Jews, the Samaritans, all that was wiped out by the unity of the Spirit of God. All right, And the church today uh, should continue to literally make every effort to unify the Spirit. Uh, one another to be united uh, through the spirit and the bond of peace which comes uh, 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 by knowing God himself because the Bible has told us in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 uh, it says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is that unity that we need to keep together knowing that we are all in one body the body of christ and we are all unified together by the spirit of god and we drink from one spirit which is the spirit of god so i hope you've been able to understand uh, why the believers in samaria had not received the holy spirit before peter and john came i think this is very important to ease and confusion sometimes there are some things that when you look at them just plainly by reading them you might get confused and get mixed up why this one had to happen why this one had to happen and and i think i'll be doing a lot of um uh a query 
kind of Bible studies on, on some things that people really don't understand. Why this one happened this way? Why this one happened this way? I'm trying to dig deep on those kind of topics and I believe it will be a blessing to all of us. And if you're there and you're still not saved, please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died by shedding his blood because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. He shed his blood, which is, uh, uh, the Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And uh, the blood is really important. So if the life is there, then Jesus shed his life for you. He gave you his life so that you, if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. All you need to do is just believe. You need to hear that, understand it, and believe. And then you can confess. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So once you have it here, you can confess it and tell Jesus, Jesus, I now understand that you died for my sins. You are buried and rose again. And I put my faith on the blood that you shed for me at Calvary. For the forgiveness of sins. God bless you and have a beautiful time.